What's up everybody? Welcome to this photo Friday. I'm going to teach you how I took this photo and I re-edited it two years later and I like it a lot better. So without further ado, here's that picture. Here's a second picture and here's this edit from today. Let's roll that intro. All right, guys, before we get started, I want to go ahead and tell you to please hit that subscribe button if you like watching these videos. If you're new here, this channel is geared towards teaching you to become a better photographer, a better person, inspiring you, being motivating, all the while just being real and raw with you. So um, I'm going to take you through the entire process of how I took this photo, and this is what I do every photo Friday. Every photo Friday is a photo that I put up on my Instagram. I'll drop that right here. What I do is I create a poll on my Instagram story and then you just go vote on which one you want me to talk about. Here's the cool thing. This photo right here is one I just found and I was like, I selfishly want to show you how I came from this photo. I took it to the second edit and then when I saw that edit today, I didn't like it and I wanted to redo it. So before we dive into it, I want to kind of tell you the premise of why I'm doing this today and I hope that it inspires you to... To, to see your photos and know like those aren't set in stone and this is the beauty of Lightroom. Lightroom, you can re-edit whenever you want, whatever you want. Um, it, you're not damaging any pixels in the editing process. So that's what's so cool about shooting in RAW and then editing here in Lightroom. So here we have the RAW photo. And this RAW photo is, is, this is straight out of camera essentially. Zero edits, nothing done to it. This is what my white balance was set at. Uh, so those are as shot if I wanted to do like a cloudy day you can change that but I went with uh, as shot and I'm going to teach you everything that I took from taking it from nothing to then proceeding to go to the second edit and when I saw the second edit today you got to keep in mind this is two years old this photo is two years old that means in two years in 24 months I have grown way past being the photographer that I was and if you are like me, you know that when you look back at your old stuff, you know, like you have to come from somewhere. Don't ever look at your beginnings as anything other than humble beginnings. Be, be grateful for where you came from. Be grateful for the, the journey that you were on and be grateful that those around you loved this picture as much as you did. Because when I posted this picture, people absolutely loved it. Now, you'll see I got the panel open up over here. I didn't really mess with much on the Lightroom uh, white balance here. I messed some with the tone. I increased the exposure by half a stop, increased the contrast. Uh, I, I lowered the highlights because I wanted to bring in those clouds and, and that, that, that contrasty color from the blue and the white clouds. Uh, I mean, from the blue sky and the white clouds. Increased the whites just a little bit because I didn't, I felt like as, as shot, they were pretty dull, so I increased them. Um, blacks I didn't mess with. I, I probably should have, but I didn't. I didn't mess with texture clarity. I messed with a little bit of vibrance. Again, this is two years old. So two years ago, I was just getting really truly comfortable with being experimenting with, with Lightroom, right? So I had used it before, but I hadn't really, I'd done everything really in Photoshop where you just, you add the contrast and exposure and uh, you you can, I can edit a whole lot in Photoshop. I've, I've, I've taken people's heads off and put them in on another person and, and that, that, that's a long story. I didn't, it wasn't morbid. It was a wedding. <laughs> I don't know where you were going with that. But anyway, so this is the second edit, right? It's not bad. It's really blue. It just doesn't fit my style at the time it did. But let's go into the edit from today. This edit to me speaks volumes. Now I'm going to go ahead and just like show you. Just, oh God, that looks so good to me. It looks so good. Like, I'm gonna make that full screen. Let's let's make that full screen. Like that. Oh, that buffalo stands for pure freedom. Like it stands his ground. Like you are not messing with this dude. Do not mess with me is what he's thinking. As a matter of fact, if I remember right, that bull just got done whipping up on another bull and he was going to uh he's going to collect. Collect his, if you know what I'm saying. So I'm gonna go through everything that I messed with in the Lightroom edits and you'll see it's a, it seems like a little blown out but I wanted that here. So I'm gonna show you everything that I went past on the tone. So the tone you can see here, 
I messed with the uh, profiles, I messed with the tone, the contrast, brought, I kept the highlights all the way down. I felt like it was just a, it, we were missing something by having them up there, so I brought them all the way down. I uh, brought texture and clarity up a little bit, vibrance. I brought the saturation up. Usually I'm a fan of bringing satu or I mean, uh, vibrance up. Usually I'm a fan of bringing vibrance up, saturation down. Uh, I really like that look, but I didn't do that this time. Um, but here I messed with the tone curve. This tone curve was a big one. I increased the mid-tones, and what that does is it takes that middle middle tone of the, of the contrasting colors and just bumps them up just a little bit. And then I brought the contrast from the whites down and increase the blacks just a little bit as you can see right here so it creates this kind of cool cool looking curve but it follows you know a little bit opposite of what this this these levels are here that's the best way to put it levels next process was uh luminance um on the orange i brought that up just a little bit i felt like it was missing a little little something from from just being normal. I brought the yellows up a little bit. Again, I wanted an overall like gold dusty tone in this. Um, brought the, the blues up just a little bit in the, the hue color. So I changed the blues just a little bit. It's, it's very, it's almost not visible, but it's there. It's just a little bit. And I brought the purples all the way down because I felt like it was we were just in the background is where those purples were coming from here the split toning the split toning all you're doing here is you're messing with the the tones of the highlights and tones of the shadows and i wanted to play around with that and i came up with i think this really cool mix look i guess you could call it of uh blues and and tans because we have a lot of tans in the photo and we have blues from the sky so i wanted to kind of play off that and I think that it, it, it really works well here. Um, I messed a little bit with the, uh, the sharpening. So with the masking, you can go over here and you can see you, if you hit option and you click that little carrot there on the slider, it'll tell you what you're sharpening. So if you, as, you, as you dial the masking back, those are all those little squiggly lines that you see of the outline, that's what you're actually going to sharpen as you hit the amount over here. So you can go all the way rad up there and create just a little bit sharper of an image um, if you wanted to I, I kind of you could play with the luminance there I kind of think I kind of like that part um, didn't mess much with the noise reduction I really liked all the the noise that you get when you increase the clarity like that but I did do profile corrections on this one it's something I really never really messed with back in 2018 um, but here I do now I do because it it reduces that like this vignette that you get from just the, the lens data that's coming in whenever it's, it's, it's a long story, but yeah. Um, I did not mess with anything else in the calibration, but I did bring a little bit of vignette around because I didn't like it without it. I, I felt like we needed something to zero your eye in. And I felt like the vignette was just, just enough. You don't want to overdo it with a vignette, but in my opinion, a good vignette is money. So that's how I came from uh, from essentially this shot. If I'll hit the uh, the little bar backslash from this shot to this shot. And last year, or in 2018, this is what I thought was my good at it. So I learned a lot, and that's what you do, right? Like you, we all learn, and if you're not learning, you're you're not growing. So. Um, the best thing that I found is I go back to my old photos. Uh, I went back to a wedding a while back and I just saw some of those photos and I'm like, God, what was I thinking? These people paid me money for this. Um, <laughs> it's pretty wild. Uh, another cool trick that I did on the crop, I, noticed, I don't know if you noticed this, but um, from this photo to this one, it looks like it gets a little straighter and that is due to this little angle tool that I use here. Really cool tool. Um, it's a it's a neat one that you can use if you have horizontal lines that you know are horizontal um, Just grab from one end to the other and this is what will be your level line So what as I do is I when I release this it straightens it out so then you can Go on about your merry way and uh, yeah, That's a pretty sweet edit. I think it's very important that we always review our work and we always improve. We look back on what we've done. We realize where we've come from and we understand that where we're going is, a, 
is is we're going to grow. We're we, and the only way we do that is we look back at where we've come from some t- from time to time. So, if you like this video, please hit that like button, hit the subscribe. Consider joining me every Tuesday and consider looking me up on Instagram. Become a part of these Photo Friday challenges, uh, little votes here and there, and uh, I'll show you everything that I know around the photo. So, anyway, I'll see you guys next Tuesday. I'm out.